Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Now listen to this. This is how the Holy Spirit works through a supernaturally given gift. Now we're going to deal with King Solomon. And I want you to check this out. First, I'm going to give you a little background. King Solomon was, he had a very humble heart with the Lord. And God, he loved God and he loved his ways. And he uh, was trying to do everything according to God's will. So he goes to God. And one of the things he says to him is, I am but a child. Now, this is in, uh, let's see, what was this? First Kings chapter three. Okay. And he says, this is verse seven. And I am but a child. I know not how to go out or come in. Now, how many men of you would, would say that? Be humble enough to say, yeah, I might be a CEO and I might be the executive, this, that, and the other, but I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm fumbling around here. How many of you would be humble enough to say, Lord, give me wisdom. Tell me how to do this correctly. Okay, check this out. He talks about the great multitude that God has placed under him and how inadept he feels. He doesn't feel equipped for the task. So what does God do? He says, ask me what you would like me to do for you. That's a blank check right there, y'all. Now, you and I would have come up with a, 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 a mile-long list, wouldn't we? Oh, yeah, you know you would. You feel like, baby, I just hit the lotto. Yeah. Well, this is what he asked for. He says, and this is what I love. Mm, mm, mm. I love people with this kind of heart. He asked God to give him discernment to judge between good and bad in verse 9. Okay? He wanted to be able to judge God's people. He, the, the, what he said really pleased God. All right? And God added to what he asked for riches and honor above anyone else before or after him. Now, of course, right after that, he wakes up from a dream. And after he does whatever he's got to do between him and the Lord, the next thing that happens is, starting at verse 16, then came there two women. I mean, he hadn't gotten the words out of his mouth good, and bam, here comes an opportunity. Yeah, okay. Here comes two women, verse 16, that were harlots unto the, they came unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman, I'm going to paraphrase so we can get through this. One woman is complaining because she said, this woman and I lived in the same house. Now, I gave birth, she gave birth. And the same night, too. Nobody else was in the house but us. But I woke up, and her dead baby was in my arms, and, and she took my, my living baby. And I want my baby back. The other woman said, no, that's a lie. You did this and you did that, and they're going back and forth. My baby knows my baby knows my baby knows my baby, right? Back and forth, back and forth. You know, like two kids fighting over a toy. Well, check out the wisdom. <laughs> check out the wisdom of Solomon. I love the way the Bible tells these stories. Okay. Now, this is what the king says. <clears throat> then said the king, the one said, the one saith, This son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son liveth, is the living. Well, check this out. My son is the living. Verse 24. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Ooh, how many of us would have come up with that one? That's a supernatural endowment of wisdom, baby. Okay, check this out. 
<laughs> then spake, this verse 26, then spake the woman whose living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, oh my Lord, give the living child, give her the living child, and no wise slay it. But the other said, yeah, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Well, then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. Now, how? Oh, let me read verse 28, you know, just to put a close on it. Okay. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was on him to do judgment. Hmm. That's a supernatural gift. Do you hear what I'm saying? How many other people would have been able to judge between that in such a clear cut, concise way, knowing that the true mother would never stand for her child being killed? Isn't that something? Well, anyway, that's just your little lesson. Now, for Pat, it's time for Pat's two cents. That's why we need wisdom, you guys. We can't be so full of ourselves that we think we don't need help. Let me, let me share a testimony with you guys, something that happened to me one time. I was sitting, I, I was a hairstylist, you know, a big portion of my life. And one day before I actually started doing that professionally, I, I didn't, hadn't gone to school yet, I was doing this one lady's hair. And she sat down in my chair in front of me. And I looked at her hair. She told me about her alopecia. And she wanted a full weave. Well, I had created, thanks to God and his ideas, I had created a form of a full weave by cutting up a wig back into wefts and reconstructing it onto braids on a person's head. So it flows and shakes and moves and lays like a full head of a natural woman's head without being too thick because I also thinned it out. Okay, so this woman's sitting there waiting for me to come up with an idea for her almost impossible situation. And I sat there and I looked at her hair and we're talking and I said, you know what? I said, I, I think we can do something. I think that I can get you to the point where nobody at church even knows that you're going through this alopecia. She had, I would say, 45% of the hair in spots all over her head was there, and the other 55% was gone. So I'm really in a dilemma. She doesn't know it, but I got enough sense to ask for help. So I asked God, I said, Lord, I said, I really need you to tell me what to do. I don't have a clue. I can't figure it out. I'm, I'm, I'm running my mouth trying to stall, but I need you to help me. You know, tell me what should I do? How can I get this done? Can I get it done? And you know what? As soon as I asked that, as I said that prayer and asked God for his help, I literally, I'm going to show you a piece of paper here. This is a piece of paper, right? And you see the layout and all of that is all neatly and well organized. Whoever did this did a good job. Well, the Lord gave me superimposed in my mind a flash of a map. A map laid out of a braid pattern that could hold the type of weave that I did. She was half bald here all the way to the edge. I mean, she had baldness here. And I mean, it was just the craziest places where she had baldness. And God showed me just exactly the layout for the braid pattern so that I could attach all the rows and the top. And she would still end up with a beautiful style that no one could tell. She ever went through that. She had alopecia for about a year and a half before all of her hair finally grew back. And yeah, I prayed for her hair while I was doing it. Nobody knew unless she told them. 
It was the exact match of her gray pattern. She had salt and pepper, more salt than pepper. A lot more, I mean, a lot more pepper than salt. And the wig pretty much matched her gray pattern. So that worked out great. But I'm telling you, I had to ask God. And he gave me a vision. And I saw, oh, that braid goes here and that goes diagonal and that. I mean, it was just like, boom. And I never lost it. The memory of the image that God showed me stayed with me until I finished that woman's braid pattern. Hmm. It pays to ask God. It pays to admit that you really don't know how to do everything. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up higher and higher, and he will lift you up. Humble yourself. And he will exalt you. Ask. And your answer will come. God bless you.